Hello everyone, um, Katie here from the Museum of Ontario Archaeology uh, for our MOA Kids activities this morning. And today's the third installment of our uh, resources of Medway Valley. Specifically, today is turtles. And there are three turtle species that make their home today in Medway Valley area. Um, and historically, we have a lot of representation of the turtle in the archaeological site that is adjacent to the museum. So we find a lot of broken uh, turtle shells and a lot of turtle bones within uh, particularly the garbage pits, um, which indicates that they were uh, most likely a significant portion of the diet. So they were um, eating the turtles, um, amongst other things, but they made it part of their diet. And so the three, there are three turtle species, as I said. And before we start talking about the turtles themselves, I have two vocabulary words for us. Um, the first is a carapace, and that is the upper shell of the turtle, and the plastron, which is the lower shell. So the two shells come together, and the turtle, um, the soft part of the turtle is in the middle um, for two of our turtles. Um, but the first turtle that we're gonna talk about is the spiny soft shell turtle. And the spiny soft shell turtle is unique in Ontario because they are the only ones with a flexible leathery carapace. That's that upper shell. So they don't have a hard shell. They have a soft, um, very leathery shell. Um, they look a little bit different than the normal turtles that we tend to think of first when we think of turtles around here. They're about 54 centimeters in length. And I have a picture of our turtles and once again I don't have a printer and I'm trying not to go into the museum too often um, so here is what a spiny soft shell turtle looks like and let's see they're kind of all the same color they're that green sort of olive -y cover color and they have a sort of a little snorkel like snout on them and they live in rivers with soft bottoms, aquatic vegetation, and sandbars, which sounds to me very much like the Medway Creek area um, because it has the shallow areas with sandbars and it has the deeper waters, which is where they hibernate. Um, however, there's probably not very many. I've never seen one of these turtles in the uh, Medway Creek area uh, myself. I, don't, I go down there every once in a while with school groups in particular. Um, but they are an endangered species, so they're few in numbers, and that's primarily due to loss of their habitat. So construction along rivers and changing of the, the shapes and the natures of the banks of the rivers is what's um, depleting their numbers by taking away the places where they live. And the next one, the next one is uh, the Midland Painted Turtle. So here's what the Midland Painted Turtle looks like. Ooh, without any shine. And a bit of a closer up photo. Nice, so the, so the Midland Painted Turtle has very hard carapace and plastron. Um, they are uh, fairly small. They're about 12 to 14 centimeters long. And they have this broad, smooth back, flat carapace, that upper, uh, shell and they're generally uh, sort of a dark olive to black with red and yellow stripes which look a bit like splattered paint which is why they're called a painted turtle because they have that coloring um, and their uh, plastron or that that lower shell is yellow um, which is how you recognize a midland painted turtle they live in uh, ponds and marshes and lakes and slow moving creeks which sounds to me very much like Snake Creek, which is a much smaller creek than Medway, um, which is too deep and too far to, uh, to walk across, um, whereas Snake Creek is very small. Um, and they are not endangered or at risk, but they are of special concern. So they could become endangered uh, or at risk in the future if they're not um, looked after. And all of these, before I talk about our third one, um, and I haven't mentioned this yet in my in this series, um, but the Medway Valley area has an envir is a designated environmentally sensitive area. So it's monitored and it's uh, looked after by a group of people who uh, try to ensure that the species that are living there are kept safe. Um, and it's a balance between people using the area for walking, et cetera, and 
maintaining the natural habitats for the animals that are calling it home. So um, that's what's helping keep them not at risk is that work and that effort. The snapping turtle is our third turtle. And we have a fairly close relationship with the snapping turtles in Medway uh, Valley area. Um, and I'll tell you about that in a moment. Um, but first I'll describe them. So they're, they're fairly large turtles, uh, 20 to 36 centimeters long. And they're an olive to a brown shell. Um, they, now this is, I liked this description on Ontario.ca of them. They have dinosaur-like triangular crests along their tails. And they do. So let me show you their photo. Um, they have these very cool, that's the baby. We're gonna talk about them in a minute. Okay. So there we go. Now I don't know if we're gonna be able to see the tail. I'll, I'll put some pictures up on our website. Maybe not in that picture, let's try the other one. That's maybe a bit better. Okay, so we can see his tail over here. Has these kind of crested, so pointy ridges on them. So they're a much different looking turtle than our other turtle. They're big and broad turtles. Um, and they're fairly large, but when they're when they're big, when they're grown, but when they're born, they're only about the size of a loony, which is not very big, it's about an inch across. Um, and they live in uh, fresh water, shallow preferred, so they prefer shallow fresh water, and they hide under the mud and leaves uh, to nest, or they hide, never mind, they hide in the mud and, under the mud and leaves when they're living in the creek area, um, but they nest in gravelly, sandy areas nearby. And that's where they become of interest, or not of interest, they're of interest anyway, but that's where they become connected to the museum. Um, because there is a turtle, a snapping turtle in the Medway Creek area who has decided that our parking lot is a fantastic place to lay her eggs. So every spring, probably very soon, um, for the last five or six years, she's laid a nest of eggs in our parking lot. So she digs a hole, lays the eggs, and then she leaves. Um, and they stay there over the summer. If we catch her, we can know where they are and we can make sure nobody uh, disturbs them. Uh, we don't always. So if, if we don't notice them right away, it gets covered over and you don't know that they're there until the eggs start hatching. Um, but they hatch in the fall, so late August and early September is when they usually hatch. And then these little loony-sized turtles, which are very adorable and have these little spines all on their backs. That's them there. And we find these, if they hatch without us collecting, um, we have people... The conservationists come, if we find them, they'll come and collect them and incubate them and hatch them and then bring them back to the creek. But if that doesn't happen, then they have to find their own way. And so we've found little tiny turtles all scattered around the museum around that time. And we help them down to the creek, um, which is where they're heading. And if they don't, it's up to them to make it. So that is our three turtles. So they were the spiny soft shell turtle and the Midland Painted Turtle, and of course, our Snapping Turtle. And I also am going to do for us a craft um, of these turtles, so. All right, so I've reset us so that we can see what I'm doing um, to make our turtle craft. And uh, you can decorate your turtle in whatever colors you like, or you can uh, Google some photos of either the spiny soft shell, the Midland uh, painted turtle, or the snapping turtle, and try to replicate their colors and their shapes and so forth. Um, or you can make them bright and colorful um, and whatever you like. Um, so what we're gonna use is an egg carton. So I've cut out 
a piece, a single cup from the egg carton. And you can see it's a little bit uh, all over the place. So we're gonna take some scissors here and we're going to even that out so that it'll stick properly onto our other, onto our base, which is gonna be the body of the turtle. So we're making the carapace, that's the, the top part. And this is gonna form our bottom part. So to make that, and we're gonna decorate this, but before we do, we're going to put it on a piece of paper, construction paper, um, I have that uh, art foam again, and we're going to draw its legs and its head and its tail. So this one I think I'm going to make into a bit of a snapping turtle. So he's got some legs on this side, around there, and he has his head right there, and some more leg, and his back legs, like so, and then our snapping turtles have those long tails with our ridges on them. So, then we're going, oh, I have two ends to that, to that marker. Okay, then we're gonna cut them out. So we're gonna cut out that piece. There we are, all right. So that's gonna be the plastron, the legs, the head, and our spiny tail. And we're gonna paint this part. So I have some paint here and I have my trusty sponge. We can use a paintbrush too if you want. Um, I like sponges. And I'm gonna take some green paint and a little bit of yellow paint because I don't have um, a lighter color green. So I'm gonna mix some yellow into this dark green here. And again, you can use whatever paint you have and splotch it all over. One of the fun things about using sponges is that you get messy. And that might be a good thing or might be a bad thing depending on your point of view. But it's also quite fun. So I'm gonna so we have a nice little green shell for our turtle. Um, I'm gonna keep painting this one. I have another one for us to put on, but we can also, as I said, do it in a really realistic way, or we can give our turtle spots, big red spots, big yellow spots. Some yellow spots, orange spots because I mixed with my yellow, my red paint, big spot in the middle. <laughs> so that's one way. Ooh, glue, hot glue gun. Um, or we can make a painted turtle. So I'm gonna actually, I'm mixing together my snapping turtle and my painted turtle shell. Um, and we're gonna attach this on. I'm gonna use the glue gun, which I keep burning myself on. You could also use white glue, depending on the materials you use. Use whatever again you have. I'll put a little bit of glue. This makes it fast for me for you to show you how these are made. Otherwise, we'd have to wait. Okay, so right in the center is where we put the upper shell. And that's most of our turtle complete but you need some eyes. And I have some of our little googly eyes, which would not work very well for your realistic look, but only use them if you want to. So we'll put an eye there and we'll put an eye there. And we'll put on our little googly eyes. And there we have our little turtle. And I'm gonna tilt this back up to me. There we are. So, there we are. You can make a whole bunch of turtles if you would like. 
or you can make one or you can make none but i would love to see photos um if you do make some uh, you can share them with us on our social media with the hashtag uh, at MOA Kids Activities, or you can send them to them directly underneath this video. Um, so just to recap quickly, we have our three types of turtles in the Medway Valley area, which are our spiny soft shell turtles and our Midland painted turtles and our snapping turtles. So I will be back with you again on Friday for the sixth installment of our Archaeology Mad Libs. Um, always fun to write stories with you. And uh, Heather will be uh, here tomorrow at 1 p.m. Uh, to talk to you about some more archaeology in London and region. And Friday's Mad Libs is at 10 a.m. as always. So um, thank you very much and bye-bye for now.